in the last lecture we moved this product object from this product form component to this product list component so now in this product list component we have our new product object and for now we are simply logging it here now what we want is we want to add this new product object to this product array and then we want to display it in the web page now in this product array we have total 5 products so if i scroll down inside this product list component we are calling this products component 5 times but when we will add a new product to this array in that case we will have six products in this array so we will have to call this products component six times if we add a new product in that case we will have seven products in this array so in that case we will have to call this products component one more time so here we cannot know in advance how many products we will have inside this product array and how many times do we need to call this products component so this approach which we are using here where we are calling this products component five time this is not a better approach so here what we want is we need a way to loop over this product array and based on the number of elements we have inside this product array that many times we want to call this products component and we want to do it dynamically because we cannot know in advance how many product objects we will have inside this products array now here from this product list component we are returning a jsx expression and in jsx we do not have a concept of loops because jsx is simply a templating engine it's just a simple syntax that eventually gets compiled to react elements we don't have something like ng4 in react like we have in angular so how can we loop over this product array and based on the number of products we can call this products component to do that we can simply use a javascript function called as map so here after this ul element we want to write some javascript code now since we want to write some javascript code first we need to use a set of curly braces like this and inside this we can call this map function on this product array so here inside these curly braces let's first access this product array and on that we are going to call this map function now this map function is a transformation function it takes an array it loops over that array and for each element it transforms that element and returns a new array with the transformed elements this map function takes a callback function so for the callback function let's use this arrow function syntax and this callback function receives the current element on which this map function is looping over so let's call this maybe product okay so when this map function will loop over this product array for the first iteration it will receive this first product object inside this product parameter then for the second iteration it will receive this second product object for this product parameter then for the third iteration it will it will receive this third object for this product parameter and so on now from within this map we want to return some jsx code and that is completely possible from this map function you can return a list like this maybe let's say this is a list and for each iteration when this map function will loop over on this product array for each iteration it is going to return this list element but here we don't want to return a list element here we want to return our custom products element so this element i'll copy it from here i will paste it here and here instead of using products of zero we need to use this product parameter so here let's replace this products of zero with this product parameter and now we can simply go ahead and remove these calls to this product component with this let's save the changes let me open the terminal here and in this terminal 
let's type npm start to start the live development server. Okay, so the live development server has been started. It is loading our web page. And here we don't see any product. Let's see if we have any error by opening the developer console. So here we have a warning, we have a warning, but I don't see any error here. So let's go back to VS Code and we don't see any product in the web page. That's because from within this callback function, which we are passing to this map function, we also need to return the value which we want to return. So here we want to return this JSX. And now if we save the changes and if we go to the web page, now you will notice that now it is displaying that product list. So here in this array, we have five products and all those five products are being displayed in the web page. All right, so in this way, using this map function, we can loop over an array we can transform the elements of that array like we are doing here and then we can return that transformed value. Now if I go ahead and if I add a new product object in this array, so let me copy this one, let me paste it here, let's change the ID to 6 and let's call it maybe olive oil test just to test if it is displaying these 6 products or not. So if I save the changes and now if we go to the web page, now we should see six products as you can see here. So this is how we render a list in React using map function. Now if I go to the web page and if I open the developer console again and if we go to the console tab, you will notice that here we have three warnings. Okay, so the first warning is related to this HTML form. The second warning is related to this class name. So somewhere we are using this class attribute instead of class name. But the one which I am interested in here is here we have this warning which says each child in a list should have a unique key prop. Now why do we have this warning and how we can fix this? We can learn about it in our coming lectures. In the next lecture, Let's go ahead and let's add this new product object which we have created using this form to this product list.